Our goal today is going to be to create our fourth weapon component. This new component is going to be responsible for taking care of our weapon's damage. So, so far, we've created three weapon components, our weapon sprite component, our movement component, and our action hitbox component. Our damage component is going to work with the action hitbox component. It's going to listen for that event that it fires off containing all the entities that it detects, and it's simply going to do what it needs to do to damage those entities. This will be part 12 of the weapon system tutorial series. You can find a link to the playlist up in the right. And with that being said, welcome to Barden. My name is Heinrich and let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do as always is create our new component scripts. So we have three scripts that we need to take care of. Our base attack data script, our component data script, and then the component itself. So let's go ahead and come to our IDE and then let's come to our weapons folder, components, component data, and then attack data. In the attack data folder, let's go ahead and add a new C sharp class, and I'm just going to call it attack damage. Now to start off with, we need to go ahead and inherit from our attack data class because this class represents the data for a single attack. Really sorry if it annoys you that I keep mentioning that, I just want to be as thorough as possible. Anyway, after inheriting from attack data, we need to remember to go ahead and add the serializable attribute to this class so that it'll show up in the inspector. Next, let's go ahead and think about what kind of data we might want for our damage component. Now, our damage component is purely responsible for dealing damage to an entity that we give it. So we only really need a damage amount. So let's go ahead and create a field, serialize field, public float, and call it amount and then give it a public getter and a private setter. So that's all for the attack damage class. Let's go ahead and come back to our solution explorer and we can close the attack data folder. And now in the component data folder, let's go ahead and right click, add C sharp class. And this one is going to be called damage data. So this is the data for the entire component. Now, the first thing we need to do here is inherit from our component data class and we want the generic version because now we're going to pass in our attack damage class as our generic type. And that's all the setup we need to do for our damage data class. Finally, let's go ahead and create the component itself. So come back to the solution explorer and then in the components folder, go ahead and add new C sharp class and we'll call it damage. Now in this class, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we inherit from our weapon component class. And again, the generic version, because now we're going to pass in damage data as our component data and attack damage as our singular attack data. So there is all the basics we need for our new damage component. So let's again discuss what this component actually does. Like I mentioned, this component is going to work with our action hitbox class that we created in this video. Now what this class does is it has a hitbox and it detects any collider 2Ds within that hitbox that is on whatever our layer mask is. Whenever we actually do detect something, we go ahead and invoke an event passing through everything we detected. So our damage class is going to listen to this private event that we created over here. And I realize now that this should be public instead of private, otherwise we can't subscribe to it. So our damage class is going to listen to the on detect collider 2D event from our action hitbox class. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and create a function that is going to handle this event. So let's come back to our damage class and let's go ahead and create a private void handle detect collider 2D. And this function is going to have an input parameter of collider 2D array called colliders. And you can see here, it doesn't know what collider 2D is, but we can go ahead and hit control full stop. And it's added using unity engine to our using statements at the top. So this is the function that we're going to subscribe to that event. So for now in here, let's just go ahead and loop through this colliders and print that out again, just so that we can test this component works before we take care of the actual damage logic. So we can say for each, var item in colliders 
print. And I'm just going to say detect it item. And here I'm going to pass in the item dot name. And so again, just note that it automatically added the dollar sign at the front of the message to make it a formatted string. Okay, so for now, whenever that event is invoked, we will print every single item that it has. And actually, let's just quickly go back to our action hitbox class. I think last time in here, I also logged the name of the items. I'm just going to remove that because we no longer need it. Okay, so now we need to actually go ahead and subscribe to this event. So in our damage class, we can start off by creating a variable to store a reference to our action hitbox class. So we can say private action hitbox. I'm just going to call it hitbox. And then we need to set the reference to our hitbox in our awake function. So let's go ahead and say override awake. And then after based on awake, we can say hitbox equals get component. And the type is our action hitbox, just like that. So now with a reference set to our hitbox, we need to go ahead and actually subscribe to that event. And we'll do that in the on enable and on disable functions. So let's go ahead and override our on enable function. And after base that on enable, I'm going to say hitbox dot on detect collider 2D plus equals our new handle detect collider 2D function. And then because we're subscribing to this event, we also need to make sure we unsubscribe in the on disable function. So go ahead and override on disable. And in here we say hitbox dot on detect collider 2D minus equals handle detect collider 2D. And so besides from the actual damage logic that we're going to add here in just a bit, that is everything we need to add to get this component to work. So for now, let's just go ahead and set things up in Unity so that we can test it. So back in Unity, the first thing we want to do is come to our player game object, select our primary weapon and secondary weapon, and then hit add component. And we want to add the damage component we just created. We then also need to make sure we come to our sword one data and underneath our add components drop down now, here we have our damage data. So let's add that to our sword one. And for now, these amounts don't matter. I'm just going to say 5, 10, and 15. And then I'm going to copy this data and paste it in sort 2. So hit sort 2, say add components, damage data, and paste that over here. OK, so with that created, everything should work. If we attack now, we should get a debug log statement in the console printing the name of the items that are detected. So let's run this. There we see we have it, combat test dummy. Getting printed multiple times. Same thing should happen if we hit our enemy two. Item detected, enemy two. And if we hit our enemy one, detected item, enemy one. Perfect. So our component is now listening to the event of our hitbox and doing whatever it needs to do. So what does it need to do? Well, if you've come from the player controller series, you probably are already familiar with our I damageable interface. But if you did not come from that, I'll go ahead and explain it regardless. So I'm going to go to my code. And in the solution explorer, I'm going to look for my interfaces folder. So you can see in here, I've created an I damageable interface. Now just a refresher on what an interface is, is it's basically just somewhere where we can define the method or function signatures that a class is going to have. So if a class implements an interface, we are saying that this class definitely has these functions. So any class that implements I damageable, we can take that object of that class and call a damage function on it. This is a requirement if you implement an interface. So you can see over here, our I damageable interface is simply one function that is called damage. It does not return anything, and it only takes in a float amount. And you can see in an interface, we don't implement the logic of whatever happens when you get damaged. Again, we were just saying, here is what you can do, not how we do it. Now, what we did in the player controller series as part of our core system is we created a core component called combat. 
And you can see over here, this core component implements two interfaces, I damageable and I knockbackable. So for both of these, we have implemented functions that take care of whatever the logic is that happens when that happens. So in the case of damage, you can see over here, we have our void damage function that takes in a float amount. And all we're doing is we're calling the decrease health function on the stats core component and spawning some particles. So I'm not going to go into all the logic for this. You can just take a look at the code on GitHub or take a look at the player controller series, but that's all it does here. So what our damage weapon component is going to do is it's going to see if the thing that has the collider that we've detected has any objects on it that implement the I damageable interface. And if so, it's going to call the damage function. Now, before we do that, there is actually just one thing I want to do here. And that is, I'm not very happy with this combat class. It doesn't really follow solid principles that well. And the principle that I feel like we're not following well is the single responsibility principle. And that is now this combat class is taking care of getting damaged and getting knocked back. But if we have an entity that say cannot be knocked back or cannot be damaged, then this, some of the stuff in this class is kind of useless. I think we should separate this core component into two separate components, one called damage receiver and one called knockback receiver. That way it'll just clean up the class slightly and also just follow solid principles a little bit better. So we'll quickly do this before we go ahead and implement the logic in the damage weapon component. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new class in my core components folder called damage receiver. Now this class is a core component and it also implements the I damageable interface. And you can see now, because we said that it implements the I damageable interface, we're getting an error. And our editor is just telling us that, hey, you're saying that this implements the I damageable interface, but there's no function in this class that satisfies this need. And so one thing we can actually do is if we just hit control full stop, you can see we can choose implement missing members. And if I click that, it creates our damage function for us. So we don't actually have to recreate all of this from scratch. I'm just going to move it from the combat class. So let's start with the damage function. Let's just go ahead and control X on that, and then come to our damage receiver, paste that in here. We're going to have a couple of errors, but we'll fix that slowly. The next thing we need from our combat class is just to remove implementing the I damageable interface as it's no longer taking care of that. And I need to move this private game object variable called damage particles from here as well. So these are the particles that we spawn when we receive damage. So come back to damage receiver and let's just paste that up here. Now we have some errors because we're not including all the correct using statements. So let's just fix that. So adding using Unity Engine takes care of all of that. And now we just have a couple more errors and that is we need a reference to our stats and particle manager core components. Now, instead of copying and pasting all the code from the combat core component, I'm going to rewrite this part just because we've slightly changed the way we do that with our new core comp class that takes care of some of the logic for us. So let's go ahead and declare a private core comp that has type stats. I'm just gonna call it stats like that and then private core comp particle manager called particle manager. Now what that means, instead of saying stats dot decrease health, we need to say stats dot component dot decrease health. And don't forget the question marks. We don't get any errors if that component has not yet been set. And the same thing for particle manager. So particle manager dot com dot start particles with ran and rotation. And so with that, the last thing we need to do is just initialize these two variables in the awake function. So let's override awake. And in here, all we say is stats equals new core component of type stats and pass in core as the core. And then the same thing for particle manager. So particle manager equals a new core comp of type particle manager passing in core as the core. 
And that's essentially all the code we need for a damage receiver. This does all the logic. Isn't this so much cleaner? <laughs> all the code essentially fits on the screen. But so for that done, we just need to go ahead and finish cleaning up the combat class. Now in here, I'm going to get rid of all the variables for other core components. We're going to redeclare these again in the way we just did. We want to keep our max knockback time variable and this boolean and float variables. And you can see they're giving me warnings and that's because knockback should be capital K capital B. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to hit F2 on max knockback time, change it to a capital B. And I'm not going to add the formally serialized as attribute in front of it because we don't really care if that value changes in the inspector. I think, I don't think we ever changed it off of 0 0.2. But just so you know, that's what the formerly serialized as attribute does. Actually, let's just go ahead and add it and see. So you can see adding the attribute formerly serialized as and then the old variable name that you changed it from, what that's going to do is make sure that whatever value you entered in the inspector for this variable is not lost. Sometimes that can happen when you rename a variable, but we don't need that. Let's go ahead and do the same for is knockback active. So is knockback active and knockback start time is knockback start time. So what needs to happen in here? Well, we can also go ahead and rename our knockback function to be capital B back like that. And that should have changed it in the I knockbackable interface as well. And that also means we just need to rename the interface itself. So F2 on that, knock backable. And so here, all it's telling me is there are some places where I've created variables that use the I knockbackable interface, and it's detecting that the name of the variable was similar to the name of the interface. And now because I'm renaming it, it's asking if I want to rename these variables as well to have a capital B instead. So not too important, it's okay, you can just rename whenever you find them. But in this case, that works for me. Now, it's also going to have an issue with backable because I don't think that's actually a word, but that is the convention we use for our interfaces. So we're just going to ignore that one. Back in combat, what else do we need to do to fix it over here? So we just need to go ahead and get all of our references to the core components again. So the first one we need is our movement core component. So let's create a variable for that, private core comp of type movement, called movement, and then in knockback, we can say movement.comp.setVelocity and movement.comp.canSetVelocity. Just anywhere here where we see movement, replace it with movement.com. Comp. Obviously, you can use control F to find and replace, but it's okay. There's only one left, but that would have been smarter. Now, the only other one we need is our collision senses over here. So let's come back up to our variables, create a private core comp for collision senses, call it collision senses, and then come down to where we use it and change it from collision senses to collision senses dot comp dot ground. And so with that done, we just need to remember to initialize these variables. So let's go ahead and override the awake function again. And in here, all we need to do is say movement equals a new core component with core as the core and collision senses equals a new core component with core as with the core. And so remember, core is just something that we get because we are inheriting from core component and it takes care of referencing the core of this core component. So with that, we're almost done. Let's just go ahead and rename check knockback to check knockback like that. And then the final thing I want to do is now this class should no longer be called combat, but instead knockback receiver. So F2 on the class name and say, knock back receiver. Now, so because we made these changes, there will just be a few things that we need to fix in the Unity editor. But before we do that, let's quickly go ahead and implement our damage logic in the damage weapon component. And then we can head to Unity and finish setting up everything there and test it out. 
So back in the damage weapon component, instead of printing this out while we're looping through each item, what we can do is we can say if item dot try get component. And so try get component is similar to get component, but instead of returning the component, it returns a Boolean. And this Boolean indicates whether it's found this component or not. So if it returns true, it will do this thing. If it returns false, it won't. But as an input parameter to this function, we can now say out i damageable called damageable. And so what this out keyword indicates is that this, instead of actually being an input parameter, is an output parameter, meaning this function, the try get component function, is going to set this variable for us and essentially return it. And we can access whatever it returns through damageable over here. So the function itself returns a Boolean, whether anything is in here or not. And then what we can do is inside the if statement, we know that there is something here, we can call the damage function on this. So in here, all we say is damageable dot damage. And the value that we want to pass in for the float amount is simply current attack data dot amount. So that means we can now come back to Unity and quickly fix our core component setup and we can test it out. So let's start with our player. If we go ahead and expand the core, you'll see we have this combat game object. Now, in this case, you can create a different game object for each one of the receivers, like the damage receiver, knockback receiver. But in our case, these entities are all going to have knockback and damage, so we can add both scripts to the same game object. That way they can share one collider. But again, if you want your knockback collider to be slightly bigger than your damage collider, they can be different components. But so in my case, I'm going to leave this as the combat game object. And you can see the knockback receiver is already here because it's simply the combat class that we had earlier. But now I'm going to go ahead and say add the damage receiver class to it as well. And you can see over here we have a field for our damage particles. And what that is, is if we come to our prefabs folder, we have this enemy one hit particle that I've been using. So we're just going to keep reusing that one for now. So I just go ahead and drag that in like that. And let's actually go ahead and just copy this component, come to our enemy two game object, expand the core, come to combat, and let's just go ahead and paste that in here. And then go ahead and do the same thing on enemy one. Perfect, so we can go ahead and try this out. I just reorder that, sorry. Okay. So if we run the game now, and we hit our combat dummy, you can see this time it breaks because, well, we're actually passing through a damage value and we're calling the damage function on the entity itself. Now note that our combat dummy, actually, if you're not coming from the player controller series, let's take a look at that real quick. The combat dummy just has a combat test dummy script on it, which if we open that up, you can see implements the I damageable interface. And all it does here is it uh, instantiates some particles and then destroys itself. So the implementation or the result of getting damaged is different to this entity, but the weapon itself could still damage it simply because we've set this rule through the interface that this object is damageable. But sorry, let's go back to Unity and run the game again. And let's just break the combat dummy for fun. And then let's go ahead and try and damage our enemies. Whoop! Well, you can see, there we go. It's not very uh, amazing just yet, but you can see the blood particles are spawning. We're damaging our, our entity or our enemies. And I think I gave them a lot of help, but eventually there we go, we can kill them. So that is our damage component. We can now make it so that any of our weapons can do damage simply by adding this component to it. Of course, in this case, this damage component works with the hitbox component and is kind of reliant on that, but the damage needs to have some sort of trigger. But what's cool about this is we can create other hitbox type components for various other solutions that we might want. Maybe our weapon has an area of effect damage that ticks a certain amount throughout the entire attack and doesn't just get triggered by the action point of that attack. We can create a component that does that where we set up what that area is and then simply invokes its event whenever we want it to.
So there's a lot of power here, and we're going to be exploring this further a lot more in the future episodes. But for now, I think this is a good stopping point for this part. In the next part, what I would like to take a look at is the auto-generation part of this weapon system. So currently, every time I've created a new component, we've come and selected our two game objects and added the component in here. And currently, if we remove any of these datas from our list and try and run the game, and there's a component there expecting this data, our game's going to break. And the whole point is that we want to be able to change out this data while the game is running, and the data can have any components that build up the logic for it. So in the next episode, I want to start getting towards the point where when we start the game, the weapon is generated for us. We don't have to do it in the editor. And that'll put us one step closer to being able to just focus purely on our component logics. And so just a reminder that if you want to have early access to the completed prototype that I'm using for this series, it is available on Patreon for all of my patrons. And with that being mentioned, I would just like to say thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people over on Patreon, and a huge special thank you to Cody Lee, SM, Madger Sins, Jake Skarupa, Patrick, Atami, Mike Rodriguez, Nathan Ackley, and 12 Feet Up. You guys are absolute mad lads, and I hope you all have just the most amazing day.